coming up on today's show. So when you brainstorm the elements of the project, it, the next step really is to identify milestones and deadlines. So, Are there some apps or, or software that helps kind of like the mind mapping for this project management uh, that you yeah. could recommend? If you have cards in Trello, for example, and each card is a component of the project, you can translate that into the different sections in this uh, project organizer. Project Management Part 2, today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Well, if you were here on our last episode, you know that we started this epic uh, two-part podcast on project management. And uh, joining us is Debbie Rosemont from It's Simply Placed. Uh, Simply Placed, I guess It's Simply Placed is the website. And um, Debbie, uh, we got through that first podcast, which is just uh, jam-packed full of information. And if you haven't listened or watched that, we encourage people uh, to go back and do that. You can find that at smeed.com slash podcast. But in our previous podcast, and we'll, we'll maybe recap a little bit here, we kind of got yeah. into more of the project planning part of project right. management. So let's just recap, give us a summary of what we talked about last time. Sure. Well, we talked about what a project was and how it's different from a task or a single thing you might have on your to-do list. Um, and how when some people put a project on a to-do list, like write a book was the example you gave, they never get to it because it's overwhelming. Um, we spoke about the way to take away that overwhelm or the first step to take, uh, which is brainstorming the different components of a project and really starting to plan out what would be needed to accomplish the goal or the project. So starting with that end in mind, getting really clear about what one wanted to accomplish in a project, and then starting to think about what the different components were. So what people need to be involved, what resources do you have or do you need, and then what are the particular parts of the project that um, would, would lend themselves more to tasks or to single actions that are um, doable. Yeah, and we also talked a little bit about mind mapping too, which is that, mm -hmm. that step of really giving yourself the opportunity to be creative and, and visually, and I know for me, I'm a visual kind of learner. Yeah. I love seeing the little circles and the spider webs and what connects to what. Um, yep. So uh, let's talk just to briefly uh, summarize the mind mapping process and how it works. Sure. Um, well, mind mapping is taking a concept or, a, again, in this example, a project or a goal and putting it in the center. And see, I've got a, a quick example here, uh, putting a goal in the center and then uh, branching out to the different components of a goal or different logistics involved or different people involved and then creating subcategories from there. So it's a great tool for brainstorming, allowing your um, thoughts to come quickly, get it down on paper in a non-linear way. You can involve other people to help the creativity flow. Uh, but it, it's a great idea to get ideas out of your head and to be able to start to visualize the uh, components of a project. Well, some people love to just park on the creative and the what ifs and, and all that. But now we got to get down yeah. into the actual management of this project. So how do we right. get started? with that yeah so when you brainstorm the elements of the project that the next step really is to identify milestones and deadlines so you'll take those different components and again thinking about the end in mind sometimes there's a deadline right so mm -hmm. you need to have a project done by a certain date so if that's true, then we want to work backwards. So creating a project timeline is an important next step once you've identified what the elements and milestones are. So in order to get to the end, we need to do these four major things. And so if the deadline is December 31st for the completion of the project, what is it then we need to have done by November? What is it we need to have done by October? So you get the idea. Right. We take the end result, we break it down into some milestones that we need to hit along the way, and we give those dates also. So we're creating some momentum and making sure that we don't leave everything for December 30th. Now you could you could do that you could do that on a cal uh, calendar, but uh, is there are are there some apps or, or software that helps kind of like the mind mapping for this project management uh, that you yeah. could recommend? 
Yeah, well, there are lots of um, project management apps, and um, Basecamp is one that I've used and that our team has used before. Um, you can do project management inside some CRM programs. Um, so I've done some project management in what we use in Sightly as well. Um, really, anywhere you can collaborate, you can do it through, um, you know, through Google and manage projects that way. Microsoft Project is another. There, there are so many. Right that the um, particular tool and recommending a particular tool is less important than understanding the steps on how to use it. Right. Okay, good. I just wanted to get that clear because some people want tools and they want to be able to right. say, yeah. okay, and some people are visual. They like to see it up right. on a wall. Other people are okay right. with a checklist kind of, uh, you know, and I know yeah. there's a there's a bunch of them. You know, Trello is one that uh, we've yeah. used around here. We have the little cards. And so. That's um, right. That's right. Well, and you can take an electronic tool and if you've got a lot of paper associated with those different components, I know you guys have a product. I've got it here. Um, this project organizer. Yeah. So it, it is, you know, one thing that somebody could have on their desk where you could take, if you have cards in Trello, for example, and each card is a component of the project, you can translate that into these different sections in this um, project organizer. They are all um, pocket folders, so you can insert paper here, you can capture some notes about that component or that card in Trello, for example, and have your paper organized this way um, and, and be able to really grab and go and take this to a meeting or take this to, um, to get some of the work done. Yeah, I use one of those. Obviously, I, I get it for free because I work here. But uh, it is nice because um, you can take it to meetings, and, and maybe you have a back-to-back -back meeting. You can even have um, different projects in, in different uh, tabs of that thing. I think it holds like right. nine different um, yeah. uh, 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 tabs there. So, it, yeah, it's a very popular product, and, and people do like that, especially people who like still dealing with paper, which there are tons of right. people that love paper. And, well, you know, and you get yeah. handouts from other people, and you can just you yeah. can just put them right in there. I was just going to say, like it or not, many of us do still deal with paper. Uh, we might not love paper, but if you're working with other people and there's paper involved, we do still need to find ways to, to keep it organized. Okay, great. Well, now we've talked about milestones. Uh, anything else within that kind of subcategory of project management? Yeah, I, I think now we're starting to get into task management. So once you've identified milestones, then you can look at that first milestone and say, okay, now what are the specific tasks that need to happen to accomplish that milestone? Um, and those tasks then become something that needs to go into a system so that you're reminded to do the right thing at the right time. So that could be Outlook tasks, for example, electronic, or it could be a daily planner or calendar. Some people will calendar their tasks and say, all right, in order to reach this first milestone, there are 10 tasks that need to happen. I'm going to take those tasks then now that are clearly identified and by themselves not so overwhelming if we think about one at a time, and I'm going to schedule that work. Right. So that's, that's really the next step is after you have the milestones, figuring out what the tasks are to accomplish it, and then to schedule that work. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, there's a couple more things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the role of a project manager because not everyone, you know, uh, can work with a group. But if you have to be your own project manager, how we might do that. And then also even just uh, what do you do when the project's done and how can you, you know, encourage yourself? So we are talking about project management with Debbie Rosemont from Simply Placed. And we will be right back. Now there's a place just for you. Life can be busy, and you still have to keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you, your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. Stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time at www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. Myorganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. Myorganize.life. We're back now on Keeping You Organized talking about 
project management. And boy, this has been a two uh, podcast episode uh, uh, mega session here. And we've been breaking it down into our little tasks. And, you know, yeah. Debbie, we've talked about setting up the project and getting things done. And, right. and uh, but let's talk about managing as a manager. Okay. So sure. you have the projects where it's just one person or the right. projects where you have a team. How, how does that differ? And what is the role of the project manager? Well, whether you're managing a project just for yourself or managing other people, accountability, communication, checking in, making sure things are moving in the right direction, those are all so important. Um, so when you have a team in particular, one of the things that you might need to determine at the outset of a project is how often will you touch base and in what way will you do that? So establishing a communication plan for the project is important. So for example, if this is a project that's going to happen over two months time, maybe you're going to have a quick weekly touch base, either email or in-person meeting, depending on what you need to discuss, but some sort of a touch base to talk about what each person is working on briefly, maybe overcome obstacles or challenges that they're facing, and then just check in to see are you on time on budget and moving forward as you have hoped so coming up with a communication plan is an important part in project management okay and you know i think also as a project manager too uh just making sure that everyone's communicating i think really right. uh and sometimes you're in a team where you're not the boss of the person and you've got to work with right. someone so that communication is uh, that's probably a whole other podcast of communicating yeah. during uh, projects but um well how about sure. when we get close to finishing or maybe we yeah. re reach one of those milestones what should we be doing i you know i always encourage celebrating um celebrating wins so Certainly accomplishing a project is a huge win and you want to celebrate and, and um, recognize the effort that everybody made. But I think that that can happen along the way as well. And people are motivated by recognition mm -hmm. and um, acknowledgement. So if a project manager can find ways to celebrate each milestone in, in small ways, it does keep people motivated and they want to continue to contribute. So celebrating wins is, is great. The other thing I think that can happen along the way, but especially at the end, is uh, kind of debriefing or breaking down, how did this go for us? Yeah. What would we do the same next time? What would we do differently? Um, I heard the term groundhog day it. So if you have the opportunity to do the project that you just finished all over again, what would you do it exactly the same or would you make changes? So when you can talk about that with a team, get their input, maybe even get client input or feedback if you've just delivered something, and then um, document the process you used if it wasn't already documented, and in particular, what would need to happen next time you do it. So right. then you're really setting yourself up for a more efficient run of that same project or similar project the next time around. And I think, you know, back to the whole uh, project plan and, and that should be probably determined in the beginning uh, that the last right. step of this project is to evaluate how we did. For sure, for sure. And, and in fact, setting up a meeting to do that in particular, um, you know, it can be a little stressful towards the uh. end of a project, especially if you have a tight deadline and um, to, you know, kind of tie a, a celebration and then this um, recap and, and Groundhog Day exercise uh, into, all right, the project is done. Now we can relax a little bit, but let's not forget about what we just finished. And in fact, let's capitalize on this fresh um, information and feeling that we have about what we could or, or uh, should do differently next time. Okay, well now we're going to talk about Simply Placed here in just a moment, but you know I, w I do want to turn the tables on you because you have a team of people that work with you. How do you, at your business, uh, project manage and, and just kind of give us the anatomy? I know you probably use these principles, but just talk about how project management works at Simply Placed. Yeah, well, we do use many of the principles and some of the tools that I've mentioned as well, but we find ways to um, collaborate virtually. So we're mostly a virtual team, but we also have in-person meetings as well where we can um, do project planning or 
project management and that touch base type work. So many of those principles um, become particularly important if you have a virtual team and not everybody is physically in the same place and you can't just walk down the hall and say, hey, how's that going? So we schedule one-on-ones, um, we schedule group meetings, and we try and keep those to a minimum because if you're spending so much time in meetings, then you know when does the work actually get done? So just providing some support to each other also uh, through some of the online tools that I talked about. Someone can throw a question out there or um, a, a challenge and we can help each other out along the way on projects. Great. Well, let's talk here in our remaining minute or two about Simply Placed, your business, what kind of customers you work with, and most importantly, how can people get a hold of you uh, to work with you? Yeah, we, we work with a lot of busy professionals um, and the companies that employ them, and, and we help companies uh, give their employees training, consulting, really you know, systems and habits to help them be more organized and more productive at work. Um, so we teach and consult on topics like email management, task management, time management, project management, mm -hmm. um, prioritization, avoiding procrastination, uh, among others. Right. And uh, we can be found on the web at www.itsimplyplaced.com. Um, and we got some information there certainly on the Titan services we provide and would love to set up a, a call or um, an exchange with anybody who thinks that we could benefit them. Great. And, and do you still uh, do a residential services as well? We do still have a residential division. So we've got a couple of our organizers that go into people's homes and they help them get and stay organized. Awesome. Well, Debbie, once again, this has been uh, an epic uh, two-part podcast, but I, I, I really think this is a, one of those subjects that people love to tackle because, you know, projects are big and, and getting over the overwhelm, I think, is really key. So, uh, But we'll have you back because I'm sure you're going to have more great tips for us on another topic, won't you? Absolutely. Great. Well, there you have it, folks. Our project is completed. Uh, we're going to celebrate a little bit, uh, saying that, hey, good job. We've done it. And uh, we'll come up with another project for our next episode of Keeping You Organized.